What's up everybody, Johnny here. We're gonna do a continuation of the last video. I'll have it in the description or link, one of these corners. Uh, if you wanna check that out, a little bit too long, I rambled. I'm gonna try not to ramble today. We're just gonna get into the footage and I'll show you. And, and the whole point is I took the X-H2S out again to, uh, it was like a little autocross type thing through a local SCCA group. And uh, they set up at the mall cones and stuff and, and run around timing. You know, they time each other and stuff. I, I actually took some footage and I brought the A9 out so that we can kind of compare how the A9 tracks versus the X-H2S. Obviously, the newer Sony cameras are actually, you know, obviously going to be a little bit better than the A9, but the A9 is not that far behind. It was updated with the latest tracking uh, the A9 was updated quite a bit over the, its five-year period. So uh, it's still a very, very capable camera, but you will see that the X-H2S, I believe, personally, in my opinion, is a better tracking camera. Now, is it better than the A9 II or the A1? Probably not better than the A1. I would say it's probably comparable with the A9 II, but again, I don't have one, so I can't say for sure. But we're gonna get into the footage. Right now, hopefully I can do this right. I've, I haven't done this in a long time and I can't figure out how to, uh, I don't wanna just import the videos in and then have to dub over the voices. I wanna, I want you to be able to see my reactions and, and hear me talk about it as we're actually watching the, the, sh the uh, clips together. So let me see if I can switch this over with no problem. Hey, there we go. I'm up in the corner here and uh, we'll see how this goes. But here we are, we are out at the mall. You can see typical mall. Uh, let me start this uh, over again. I started off with the A9 and um, I just wanna give you, here's just a, I'll just show you. We'll, we'll just play the clip. And of course this is the EVF recorded. You can see the tracking as I'm trying to pick up the car. It's jumping over to the door. It finally grabbed onto the car. Now this is a pretty quick little car, little Fiesta uh, S or R or whatever it is. So they're pretty quick little cars. And, uh, let me go back. So I'm, I, I can actually, uh, kind of do the clips manually here. So I was trying, I was aiming for the door. So I was aiming for the door. It finally hits right at the rear of the car. Now it did stay through the person, the track monitor, but then it lost, it bounced, went away. I Well, I might've let off of it. Maybe I did let off of it. And then you can see I'm trying to reacquire right there and it starts, but it missed. And it jumped back here to this fence. I don't know why it jumped back to the fence, but it did jump back to the fence. And then as it, came around, it comes around the corner there, I just kind of sit in one spot. I mean, I, I, I just, I wanted to get just a little bit of footage, not a whole lot. So then I try latching on again, locking on again, and it kind of still latching onto that door back there. And then I gave, you know, kind of quit, gave up. And then as it's coming right in front of me, it finally locked onto the door or the tire actually. And I kind of went into this little, whatever, the little boxy mode there. And then was still hanging on to the back of the car. Now we're going to go over the images as well. I'll show you a couple of the images. We'll go into the Lightroom. I, I haven't done anything to the images yet. I just imported them, that's it. And show you that the A9, it's, it's tough. It really is kind of tough to, uh, to get it to work right. And I mean, it's a lot of it, again, a lot of it's technique. I'm not the best. I don't claim to be the best. And I will never claim to be the best. So let me pull up, let's see. Let me get rid of this one here. and. Pull this one up. Hopefully you guys will be able to see that. I don't know. I don't know. This is so weird. It's not, it's not working right for some reason. But anyway, so this is the same car again. I don't know. This is me checking my images. So I was checking the images and... I did hit a few. I mean, it did hit a couple, but not not as many as what you're going to see when when the uh, XH2S pops up. 
So let's look at this little deal here. What do we got here? Looking at the ground, looking at the ground, looking at the ground. Maybe I should have edited these. I don't know. Maybe I should have edited them. All right, so here we are, another car. This car is not quite as fast as the, uh, the little Fiesta. And you, did you see that? Let me go back right here. You see that? It just completely, I was trying to hit the car. Now, granted, I should have been a little bit lower, but it launched on, I realized that I missed, let off, and tried to hit it again here. Again, this is technique. I'm just, I just wasn't hitting today for some reason. And then tried to grab it again, missed again, then finally grabbed the front of the car, and it stayed with the front of the car as long as I held the button down. It pretty much stayed with it around the corner there, and then I quit. So, again, technique. I wasn't on my game today for whatever reason. I just, I just wasn't on my game today, man. I don't know what happened. Uh, again, starting out on the ground. Here comes another vehicle. Uh, this car, a little bit slower. And again, you can see I did grab that and the hood. But the the thing that I was trying to that I was mentioning yesterday in the other video, if you remember, um the biggest thing with the Sony is the problem I have is it seems like the box is just too small. It doesn't oh, that's just me checking checking my uh checking my footage, checking the photos. Here we are looking at the ground again. Blurry, nice blurry ground. That a boy. Good job. Get up. What are we doing? Here we go. All right. So, so I did nail the, I'm just getting warmed up. So I'm starting to nail the cars now, finally, instead of the wall. That one tracked pretty good. That one wasn't bad. That was a pretty decent, uh, that one tracked all right. Let's see what this one did. Let's see. It's still the Sony. Yeah. Also had the uh, that one I missed to grab the cone. Here's this Camaro. Grabbed it, pretty good, not bad. Grabbed the tire, grabbed the door, grabbed the front of the grill. Now I'm, you know, that was a decent one. I should have a couple decent so shots out of that. But again, I just feel like the Sony sensor is too, like the the box is too small. I I just. To me, you know, and with the with the Fuji, it expands, and and maybe with the A1, maybe it expands, but uh, I don't have an A1, so I I can't tell for sure. So where yet? Okay, here we go. Here's the Tesla. It was actually a Tesla. This thing was fast through this course, so it was hard to keep up with him. It's going. It just it's way faster in person. I got some good shots there. Flashed onto the couple misses. For sure, maybe a few more misses. So we'll do one more of the Sony and see if I can dig and find the uh, see if I can find the uh, Fuji ones. Uh, love the ground, love that blurry ground, buddy. Great job, great job today. See it lashed on. I, it, it was hitting that pickup truck back there, hitting the door back there. I just wasn't fast enough. Part of that's me. So once it latches on, once I could get it, it was latching on. But some of that, again, was me. It's, I, I just have to be honest here. But even when it picked up on it, I think here's some Fuji. Same thing, blurry ground. Good job, buddy. Awesome. Oh, also, white balance was off. That was, that was brilliant, too. Now, as you can see, well, this car is moving super slow, but um, I think it was a first-timer. But you see, it's just the box just expands when they're right in front of me. And it's uh so much better. Let's see if we can get a faster car going through here. Let's see if we can find us a faster one. Oh, one thing I did notice too. The automobile track. Now, obviously, I'm in automobile subject tracking. This thing loves white cars. See that latch on to the white car? And that's what I was trying to show you is I kept moving the camera around. It was only latching on to the white cars first. So something about those white cars or lighter colored cars 
it attracts that box. Now that one over there didn't, but that one, look at all them vehicles around and it just goes right to that white car. That's the clip. I just wanted to show you that clip because there's something about lighter colored cars. Now they might have to tweak something in the algorithms for that. And I think they should. I really think they should because that's, uh, that's a problem. Unless you're shooting white cars all the time, then you're fine. But yeah, see, this one's a little faster. It'll the box box expands, catches it, and I was checking the photos, and there was just so many more, and it tracks all the way to the finish line. I just let it track. I didn't take photos, but I just I was just letting it track, and it jumped right to this white car. So another white car is coming up next. This is uh, he's gonna get going. And by the way, if you happen to notice, yes, this is a right hand drive. Toyota. <laughs> so, oh, do you see it? You see it jumping to the other cars. So in a busy background, you got problems until this thing starts learning where you're at. See, it's trying to jump back there to that other white car. If you let me go back, let me go back, go back. Right. See that right there. That other white car kind of jumped right in the way. And then back here, I think it jumped to that pickup truck. So let's go back right No, I'm trying to track these things all the way around right there. So right there, I was hitting the button to lock on right as it moved over and it locked onto that car instead. So then I had to let off and just let the box go back to the car and it was fine, fine, fine. Sometimes the box is going to expand. Sometimes it's not, but it's still locked on. I mean, it's still tracking the car like it's supposed to. And then it jumps right there, right there, jumps to the other white car and then just keep chugging along. The problem is too. See that car parked right there? I don't think it was supposed to be there, but they couldn't find the owner, so they couldn't move it. So it was trying to jump to that car on occasion. But yeah, see, it's just, it's uh, expanding, locking on very nicely, like it's supposed to do. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay. What am I doing? Okay, here we go. Darker vehicle, again, is trying to jump. I don't know what it was trying to jump right there. But for the most part, and it's trying to jump back to those white cars again. Something about those white cars. So that might be an issue they need to take care of. Of course, my exposure is not right. So I'd have to do some, uh, I'm going to have to do some serious post-processing to lighten up those cars. Let's go to another one. I think you guys are getting the point here. I think it's pretty simple that you're getting the point. It is, it works. And as it goes, it learns more and more. The problem, uh, see, it tried to grab the guy's helmet. And I'm in, like, again, I'm, you can see it down there. I'm in subject auto detect. So it should not be worrying about faces. Let me go back here. Right there. So it's trying to grab the guy's helmet, trying to grab the head. And then it went ahead and, you know, expand. It did what it's supposed to do. I'm, you know, I'm good with that. Jump ahead. What was I doing? Nothing. Great, great video of the ground, buddy. I did such an awesome job. <laughs> Being totally facetious. All right. Again, too, I was still bumping the damn aperture ring. I, I I kept doing that. What am I doing? Uh, nothing. I'm doing. I'm recording nothing. I haven't been through these clips, so I just downloaded them, and I'm just so I apologize if I'm uh, wasting our time. So here's car coming through again. You can see it's doing just fine. It gets better. The thing I've noticed is it gets better as you go along. It does get better. So the this learning AI that Fuji says they have, I think it's working. I think it really is working. The question that I have is, is it going to remember the next time you're doing the same thing? So the next time I go out to the same area 
or the racetrack, the drag strip, wherever, is it going to remember what I was doing? You know, is it going to remember um, by remembering where I'm at? Because usually these things are set up in the same area. See, it's getting better. It's a, it just seemed like it was getting better, like it's not jumping to background objects as much. So it is getting a little bit better. But it is, you have to agree with me, it's much better than the A9. Much better. Let me see if I can go, let me jump ahead here to uh, maybe get some different cars. Uh, oh, nice sky shot, idiot. All right, so there's the Tesla. Very dark, pretty blacked out trick. See how it's, this is much later on. Oh, it did jump over, over there. But for the most part, it is getting better and better and better as this guy, you know, as we go along. Because that box has stayed expanded more. Oh, they was trying to jump to the other car because it was a lighter car, apparently. But, I mean, it did really well. You'd get plenty of shots out of that. There is no way you can't get plenty of shots out of that. So what am I doing? Okay, here we go. See how it does with the yellow car because it's kind of light? It's hanging on. It's getting better. It's not jumping as much. So there you go. Look at it. I mean, it's it's knocking it out of the park. And these cars are much faster. They're going much faster than it appears on here. You just have to be there. I mean, they're not like, you know, it's not like you're at a Formula One race. But they're still going pretty quick. Now Here's that little Fiesta again. And see how it's doing much better this time than it was the first time? I think it's doing way better. It's not as, there it goes. It finally expanded. But yeah, it just follows it all the way around, and it, I just let it track all the way to the end. So I honestly, I think it does just fine. I, I think it's, I mean, what else is there to say? I think I've provided enough proof that the autofocus works, and it works well. Just busy backgrounds it has a little bit of a problem with. Again, that could be tweaked in, uh, probably be tweaked in uh, a, a firmware update. So anybody out there got any input in Fuji, hey, let them know that, you know, show them my videos and let them know that, you know, a little bit of tweaking, you've got this down. I mean, and, and then afterwards, I was going to also, I did a photo shoot afterwards, a, uh, a, a part, kind of a part two of a senior photo shoot I was doing for somebody. And I was going to take, I did take the Ninja with me, but I was having some issues and I needed to use flash. So I was just, instead of bouncing back and forth and all that, I just said, screw it. I didn't do the, the video or anything like that. Because honestly, I don't think I need to. I know for a fact that the eye autofocus is spot on. I know for a fact that it's spot on. If I get the Ninja back again one day, and I'll, I'll show you myself. But there is plenty of videos out there that show at least three or four videos out there that show clearly that the eye autofocus works perfectly fine. So Mr. Angry, you're wrong. You're either lying, you're being malicious towards Fuji or something because you're wrong. The eye autofocus works perfectly well. It tracks perfectly well uh, when you're shooting a model or whatever, when you're shooting photos, uh, uh, you know, it, it works fine. It works just as good as the Sony's. It worked just as good as my A7R3 and my A9 and my A7 III did and anything that I've seen from the A7 IV. Uh, it latches on and it follows them and it just sticks. No problem in the, in the stills and the, you know, when you're shooting people, it has no issues whatsoever. Now video, hey, video, I'm not a video guy, obviously. I just, I'm not a video guy. I would like to learn more about video and maybe I will later on. But for right now, I'm just, you know, right now I shoot stills. Maybe I'll get into the video thing one of these days. Now that I got the camera to do it. Um, let me, I was going to show you guys. I wonder if I can open up Lightroom here. Let me open up Lightroom. Let me get to... Where is ninja footage? I shot a thousand photos. Are you serious right now? Yeah, I'm not going through all of those. So let me, I don't know. Is this even showing up? Is this, is this showing up at all? I don't know. 
Um, okay. Hopefully you guys can see this. I, I apologize again. I was trying to figure this out, how to get this to work right. And it was, just wasn't work right. So little sequences here. Um, this is, oh, this is the Fuji. Well, who cares? Well, let's look at the Fuji. I'll zoom in. That one's out. Let's see. Let's start. That one was focused here on the nose. That one is focused on the number on the door and the driver's a little more clear. So two's a hit, three's a miss, four, it's actually hitting the driver. So the driver's helmet, technically it's a hit, but not really because the car's not in focus. This one was focused on the door in the back of the car. So that's a hit. Um, that's a miss. Again, this is technique. I was lazy too. I was just being lazy. I wasn't trying too hard. And there's a miss too. So, you know, and this, this is early on. This is the first set. Um, let's go to, let's go to later on. Is that the same? So here's later on. Here is a sequence. Where does this sequence start? Man, I took a ton of these. So that's a hit. Is that a hit? No, that's a miss. First one was a miss. Hit. Hit. Miss. Uh, miss. I forgot I got to wait for Lightroom to catch up. Hit. Miss. Miss. Wow, I sucked. This, this, yeah, I was stinking it up today. That was a hit. I need to find that was a hit. Uh, where's the one that we did last? Again, with panning shots, you're not guaranteed a lot of hits. So again, I'm using the most extreme case. Um, uh, how did this one do? We're zoomed in, by the way, if you're wondering. See, these are hard to do when they're round in the corner. Now this one, that'd be considered a hit because the numbers and the headlight is, is in focus. So is that one. Was that one? That's still in focus, but this headlight's out of focus. This one's sort of out of focus. And the side shots, this is where I struggle the most. Side shots. That was a miss, miss, miss. So I don't know, man. There's a hit. It's hard to tell with the. Turn that up. That's a hit. That's a hit. So the first three or four were hit misses, and the rest of these are pretty much hits. That's a hit. That's a hit. Oh, here's the here here we are. This is the last video that we watched. Here's the car. This should be this should be the sequence. I believe. Yeah, this should be the sequence. So. See where, remember the box was going to the helmet? That's where that is right there. It was it was trying to lock onto the helmet. See it? So the helmet's clear and the door's clear too, but so this would be a hit technically, uh, but this one would be a miss because you can't see enough of the helmet and the number's kind of blurry. It's It's not really a hit. And then that's a miss, still trying to hold onto the helmet. That was a complete miss. I think it's still trying to grab the helmet. If you remember the video, the green box was trying to hit that helmet. This was like down here somewhere, the very front of the nose of the car. 
And then remember through this entire sequence on the video, it the box was around the car. It never let off. So let's just see how many are hits. So that's definitely a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's That's tough. The number's a little bit soft. But right back here is is in focus. Man, that's a that's a toughie. That's a toughie. So we got one, two, three hits, four, three and a half. We'll call that a half a hit. So three and a half hits. Uh, that's definitely a miss. That's a miss. That's a hit. So these three here, is it this one? One. So one, two, three, four. The box never left. You you guys saw it. The box never left. And four of those is blurry. That was a hit. That's a hit. Miss. Definitely a miss. Definitely a miss. Definitely a miss. I don't know if the green box was still latched on. Definitely a miss. Definitely a miss. I think the box was gone at this point. Maybe I'd let go of it by now. No, because it was still grabbing onto the rear of the vehicle. That's a hit. Yeah, I don't know, y'all. It looks like it's about... I, I'm going to guess 70%, 60-70%, uh, which isn't the greatest, to be quite honest. I mean, you're still going to get your shots. Like me... When you take multiple shots like this to get one or two good shots, it's going to work for me. So if you're if you're out there trying to, sh you know, it's just don't expect every single shot. But again, I wasn't getting every single shot with the Sony either. I'll show you. I got even less with the Sony. Uh, let me go back to the library. And where is the Sony A9? Uh, by the way, white balance was way off. I didn't realize it. You see, I can ch I changed it. <laughs> I changed it eventually. So yeah, there you go. Uh, I didn't realize that the white balance. I was like, why does everything look so weird? But uh, yeah, that's why. So here's the Sony, the A9. That's, it's soft. It's not a, it's just soft. Uh, here's the Tesla. That number's a little, the whole side, it's just a little bit soft. So it's, it's latched on, but it's soft. It's not. There, that's definitely a miss because it's definitely soft. The whole thing is soft. Again, sorry for the white balance. So it's it's tracking the car just fine. You saw that it tracks when it latches on, but if you're not dead on, every there's a hit. So out of one, two, three, four, the fifth shot is in focus. Even though they were all latched on on the A9. So, you know, again, it's a five-year-old camera, but the autofocus is still awesome. But that is an actual hit right there. Because you can actually read, you can see the tail light really nice. You damn near read the license plate. So that's definitely a hit with the A9. So I would say it's probably about the same. Maybe it's a, it's about the same hit rate. But the thing is, Fuji's going to be able to tweak these and get it better. So there, there you have that. Uh, if, if you want to take that for however you want. But I think it's still, I think it works fine. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take the learning AI that's involved seems to be working really well. It's, it does seem to be getting better. Um, I don't know. Uh, here's the senior pictures that I took. Uh, that's what I was trying to tell you guys. Those eyes are glassy. This is before the eye autofocus was even in. This is before it even, uh, I got it to even work right. Let's see. Let's do, where's the close-ups? 
Look how glassy those eyes are. This was with face detect. I didn't even have eye detect on yet. The eye detect didn't come till later. Like probably there. Maybe. I think I had it going on here. I think I had it going on there. So those uh that's where I started it. But this this camera just it's the I think the photos are amazing. Little Acros action there for you uh Fuji film buffs. My uh, Lightroom is acting slow because I'm recording this. I record directly into my computer. I don't do the record on the camera and then take the memory card out and blah, 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 blah. I love the portraits I'm getting out of this. Look at the eyes. Look at that. Look how glassy. Ugh. 90 millimeter F2, y'all. 90 millimeter F2. Oh, such a beautiful lens. Such a beautiful lens. Uh, this one here, she almost looks like... That could almost be... Oh, here it is. Like this, this is almost like a Kathy Ireland <laughs> moment. But look how glassy. Look at that. Look how glassy those eyes are. That's the that's the XH2S, y'all. I, I think it's just fine. I think I think the IOTA focus works just fine. Obviously. Let's see when you remember to put it on. Uh also, <laughs> I I did go back. I, I took some footage and made I'll do that as I'll just do that as a separate video. But I did go back to the park and I was trying to get I'm like, you know what? I got the ninja here. Let me embarrass myself and try to get some birds like a moron. So I'll just, I'll do another video with that. I, I don't want to do, make this any longer than it already is. So uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, for this video, it, it does have some issues. And, and the reason I'm doing all these videos, I do, I, I want to do a response video to guys like the angry photographer and this other guy that doesn't even have the camera, but he's got an opinion about it. You know, I I, I want to answer these guys. I really do. But I want to show you my findings first so that you know where I'm coming from. For the most part, it needs a little bit of work for sure, but it's not nearly as bad as everybody's making it out to be. And the only reason these people are making it out to be that bad is because, number one, they can't afford the camera. Number two, they can't afford it, but they can't get their hands on one. Number three, Fuji didn't send them one for free. Number four... Uh, what, what's number four? Uh, doesn't have any dial -y things on it. No dials for them to play with. Number five, whatever, whatever reason that they have to complain and whine and, and, and piss and moan about it. I don't know. It, it, I think it's ridiculous. It's better than the X-T4. The image quality maybe is the same. Maybe it's a little bit better. Okay, that's fine. Fuji never. Fuji never said it was going to be better. They never said the image quality was going to be, oh my God, it's going to be 14 times better. They never said that. A little bit better dynamic range. You've got the, uh, the F-Log 2 now. You've got better video specs. The video autofocus from what I've seen is better for sure than the X-T4, you know, especially on people. So vlogging with it, if there's, and by the way, there's no more vlog vloggers. There's like two left. Uh, and they're both in Canada, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I, I just, I don't know. I think it's ridiculous. All this, this hate is, is unwarranted. And again, I think it's because the X-T5 didn't drop first. The little dialy cameras didn't drop first. They dropped the professional body cameras first and everybody's irritated because all the Fuji fanboys wanted to have their little trinkets and they wanted to have all the new features before the pros got their hands on the pro body. And unfortunately, Fuji decided not to go that route and went the other route. And you're probably going to have to wait till next year to get your hands on the little dialy, little dialy cameras. Um, and, and by the way, I don't mind them. I think they're kind of cool looking. And, and honestly, I think it's what a lot of people only want them for is when they're out shooting, when they're out doing the street photography, because that's the thing with the Fuji cameras, go do street photography. I think you're just doing it for attention. 
I think you just want, you want people to come up and ask you about your camera because you're not, it's not, they're not comfortable cameras. They are not comfortable to hold. They're not comfortable to carry around. I'm sorry. They're just not, you know, I mean, you can, you can argue with me all you want, but you know, deep in your heart that those X series cameras, especially the X-T3, X-T4, they are not comfortable to hold at all. They're not, even with the grip. They're just not. So stop trying to tell people. Just be honest with me. I don't even care that that's why you want the cameras. I Just be honest about it. Hey, I want people to, to think that I'm cool because I use a retro camera. <laughs> just say it. Just be honest. Just be honest. You know? I mean, <laughs> come on. Anyway, thanks for watching, liking. Thanks for hating. All the hate, hateful comments that are coming my way. From the Fuji fanboys that love the dials. You know, I, whatever. You guys, you guys can complain about the XH2S. I can complain about you. It's a free country for now. Still, kind of. Sort of. Sort of. Uh, coming up, probably sometime, I am going to answer these people and go. What I'll do is I'll probably play their video. Not the video itself, but the audio from the video. So I can answer them directly. Uh, each point by point. Because I, if I play the video, they're going to try to strike it down as copyright or whatever, even though it's all free on YouTube, you know, and, and, and once you throw it out on YouTube for free, it's out there for everybody to see. Um, so I'm going to do it as a commentary. So if you don't like it, I don't really care. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Please like, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good crap. And uh, we'll catch you again soon with another video. I'll do the, I'll do the park video with the ninja. Show you how I failed again trying to track birds. I pretty much kind of suck at it. So, uh, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>